top 10 movies of 2004. Start with number 10, Maria Full of Grace. The heroin mule trade, swallowing condoms of heroin to get past the border guards, is a subject I knew very little about. I assume these people suck down 10 condoms or so, not 50 plus. If just one condom has a leak, you digest all that heroin and die. You might say good for them, but when you think about it, as this movie forces you to do, how desperate do you have to actually be to take this chance? Here are your choices. Death, prison, or a few thousand dollars to help your family in Colombia. Man on Fire, number nine. Denzel Washington hires himself out to protect the little girl from being kidnapped in the ever-dangerous Latin America. Kidnapping rich relatives for profit has become a big industry down there, and adorable little Dakota Fanning is a right target. When she does get snatched and the money trade goes awry, Denzel is determined to make the kidnappers pay. Number 8, Shrek 2. It starts off slow and doesn't produce too many laughs in the first half, but the second half makes it the funniest movie of the year. I enjoyed the second half so much more than even the entire first Shrek movie. And the key ingredient to the sequel was Antonio Banderas' cat assassin, Puss in Boots. Spartan, number 7. Written and directed by the always great David Mamet, Val Kilmer plays a CIA assassin out to find the daughter of a mysterious government employee, perhaps the president. He gets himself in deep and finds he's part of a bigger conspiracy. Just sit back and watch as he uses any means necessary to accomplish his goal. When he interrogates one sus escaping suspect, the guy screams, You broke my arm. No, I didn't. Then the guy lies to him. Crack! Now I broke your arm. Number six, Before Sunset. A sequel to one of my favorite romantic comedies of all time, Before Sunrise. It's very good in its own right and has the added benefit of, be of being in real time. Meeting in Paris, the characters have 90 minutes to talk before a flight leaves for New York, and the movie watches them the whole way. These two are meant to be together. Funny and incredibly touching. Million Dollar Baby. Think of Dirty Harry's The Enforcer. A crusted hard veteran is forced to team up with a little Irish firebrand, at that time played by Tyne Daly, who is determined to show she can keep up with this veteran, and he grows a grudging respect and a non-sexual love for this woman. Now take away the police story and replace guns with boxing gloves and you have Million Dollar Baby. Eastwood is Eastwood here, and the firebrand is now Hilary Swank as Maggie Fitzgerald. Maggie wants to be a female boxer and a good one, and wants Frank's help. She gets it thanks to the always great Morgan Freeman. I love the fight scenes because they show you how ferocity, determination, and great training can overcome speed and youth. The Aviator, number four. Goodfellas is Martin Scorsese's best movie but this is one of his best. The scenes recreating how he uses 1920s airplane movies are great, as are the flying lessons for Katherine Hepburn and the spectacular crash in Beverly Hills. Leonardo DiCaprio does a great Texas accent and plays obsessive compulsive disorder beautifully, especially in the beginning when it's just a subtle part of his character. Kate Blanchett's Katherine Hepburn is so perfect, she deserves any award she got. And Alan Alda makes a great comeback as a congressman deep in Pan Am's pockets. Number three, The Incredibles. Pixar knocks one out of the park. After slipping with Finding Emo, they come back with this very funny, very exciting CGI animated tribute to superheroes. My favorite character is the little boy Dash. I could really relate to him, because what little boy wouldn't want to have a superpower? I also loved The Incredibles. Uh, loved how The Incredibles were in real mortal danger. And number two, Fahrenheit 9-11. Michael Moore may not share your political viewpoints, but he sure knows how to make an entertaining film. Bowling at Columbine was a brilliant, funny, heartbreaking documentary, and this film was an equally great follow-up. It throws a lot of info at you and a lot of what-ifs. Some of the questions are regarding the Bush's unseemly relationship with the uh, Saudis, the people probably most involved in 9-11. But they are questions that deserve some attention. In the film, when the Secret Service makes a special trip to the Saudi Arabian Embassy to protect it from Michael and his cameras, you realize that he might be onto something. My taxes are paying for the protection of our enemies. Number one, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I was sucked in and loved the combination of the dreamlike state and the real world. Jim Carrey is tremendous as a heartbroken man looking to erase all the memories of a relationship gone wrong. You feel his pain as he first wants to wash it away 
and then struggles to keep those memories when they become entangled with his good thoughts. This movie shows you the true highs and lows of love that you really see on screen. Kate Winslet, who I usually don't like, was incredible here as the free-spirited girl who loves desperately but doesn't fully trust. She can be sweet or a nasty piece of work, but as the movie unfolds backwards, you see where the nastiness comes from. And now for the honorable mentions. Shaun of the Dead, comic tribute to zombie movies. Dawn of the Dead, a perfect sequel, a perfect remake of a perfect sequel. <laughs> Supersize me. This guy brings fast food to its knees and managed to have supersized meals wiped off McDonald's menus. He ate McDonald's every day for 30 days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and ended up with a sick liver and other health problems. Friday Night Lights. Billy Bob Thornton stars as the coach of a real Texas football team, high school team back in 1988 that was expected to win the state title, and lost its star running back in the first game of the season. Sideways. A very funny movie at times, and a very downbeat movie at times. Otherwise, it would have been higher on my list. Hero. I love Jackie Chan, but Jet Li is just not human with all his contortionist moves. The scenes that use uh, Crouching Tiger type uh, fighting, I'm not crazy about, but if viewed as pure art, it works beautifully. Uh, the Polar Express. The story is very nice, and the trip to the North Pole is full of wonder and excitement. But there is a distance in this film that leaves you kind of cold. Team America World Police, the best puppet movie I've ever seen, although I don't know what number two is. I'm Matt Damon. Spider-Man 2, the fight scene on the elevated train in Midtown Manhattan kind of ruined it for me. It's too fake. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, wow, first really good Harry Potter movie. The Manchurian Candidate, Denzel Washington plays Frank Sinatra's part in this remake as a returning soldier from the Gulf War who experiences terrible dreams and thinks he may have been brainwashed. And finally, The Passion of the Christ. For all its faults, Mel Gibson made a movie that stays with you, and you can't diminish the horror of the images. Has anyone made a scarier manifestation of the devil than Mel does in this film? I wish it was in English, though. Then it would have felt even more real. Ciao from the Fredder.